Hey everyone, Josh here. So today we're doing a starter rebuild video on the V10 TDI. So the last video was getting this thing out of here with the engine in frame. So now we're gonna rebuild it so it's good to go. So new ones are about $1,000 Canadian from Volkswagen. You can get starters off Amazon, which appear the same for about 300 Canadian. Uh, but this isn't a five minute job, so you don't really, I don't, know, I don't think I'd wanna risk it with a cheaper brand or an off brand, reman, whatever you wanna say. So we've got a rebuild kit, so we're gonna give this a try and uh, see if we get the thing starting better now. So we've got a few goodies in here. We've got the solenoid, we've got the brushes, and then the rest of the stuff I believe is for my alternator. So we've got bearings, regulator, rectifier, whatever, and then the clutch pulley. I'm not doing the alternator right now, it's working fine. So the main thing's getting the starter going. So all the stuff was about half price of what a new starter would be, roughly, I think. So I got this all from Anchor Motorworks. So if you wanna try rebuilding it, you can. He also, you can send it in yourself and he will rebuild it for you. So I'm in Canada, so I thought it'd be a little bit cheaper on shipping if I just did this myself. So we're gonna give this a shot. So believe it or not, I've kind of cleaned this down. I've wiped it down with brake clean. Yeah, it just doesn't really wanna come off very nicely. So we're gonna get solenoid out of here first. We just got these torques in the one, two, three and then this main power wire on the back so we'll get this off of here to begin with so the very first interesting piece is the arm that throws the gear out here kind of sits in the spring loaded area so that's going to be fun to get back in um, but anyways so that can all come up out of the starter or out of the solenoid here like so up next, we're gonna split this casing here with just these two bolts. So my phone died mid disassembly here. So we've got some, or a lot of bad news, I guess. So we got that tie bolt off. This back cover comes off quite easy. You've got just a washer here. You've got a C-clip. And then just this little cap that mine was cracked, but that just kind of holds everything there onto that back bushing. Nothing too uh, too special about that. Um, the front, this is a planetary gear set. So that just comes out of there. That's a lot of gunk in there. Um, so as far as the bad stuff, I don't know what these do quite yet, but they're all cracked all around. So that's my first issue. And the other issue is this is a Bosch starter and I got parts for a Valio starter. So I'm trying to keep my dirty paw prints off of this. That's a bit of a difference. So I'd sent the picture in of my starter to figure out which one we had. Um, and obviously they're not in a real nice spot. So I guess we guessed wrong on which starter it is. So I'm gonna keep disassembling it, see if this thing is salvageable and uh, figure out which way we're gonna go from here. Next up, I think I'm gonna get the whole assembly out of this casing here. Probably get these brushes off and see and make sure there's nothing melted in here in the windings. Okay, so we're gonna get this nose apart right now make sure everything's good up here. I kinda wanna check out this planetary. So to get all this off, this was over slid over top, so just a little punch and a hammer to get the sleeve off. And now this internal snap ring, um, ideally you're going to want to use the um, external snap ring pliers. It's basically like pliers, but when you squeeze them, they open up. They have nice little jaws, minor MIA. So I'm just going to use regular old snap ring pliers and hopefully I can grab onto it here. Okay, so snap ring and that collar is off. So then you can walk the planetary set off nicely. So you end up with the nose here yet with a throw out bearing. So if we take this, well, take that rubber cap out nicely. This fork is on this little plastic little pivot. It's kind of hard to film and do, but something like that, that'll come out and then you should be able to walk that out the front, I think, or maybe the back. 
I don't know, I'll give it a try. Okay, yeah, so that comes out the back nicely. So it's not really much you can do with this, except maybe put a little bit of grease in there. Um, the thing I can't believe is it's just a plastic throughout fork. Bushings all seem fine. So the nice thing the, with the V10, I don't think you can jam the starter while running. Like it won't allow you to engage the starter while the engine's running. So it's not like the gear gets jammed into the flywheel at all. So it's not like it's needs to be real, real strong, I guess. But that's kind of the it for the nose cone in the front here. So let's figure out what's going on in this planetary set. Okay, so the end cover comes off nicely. Just those little tabs have like little points just kind of clip into there. So you just walk that off with a uh, screwdriver. So here's your planetary set. So those rollers all have, or like those planet gears all have little roller bearings inside. But again, there's nothing really spectacular there you could probably use a little bit of fresh grease um these broken plastic collars are what stops the sun gear from or not the sun gear but the ring gear from moving around so i'm not a huge fan that they're broken but i think as long as both halves stay there we should be fine so a little bit of goop whether it's grease or a little bit of anaerobic sealant or something just kind of hold it there I think we should be fine with how those are. Okay, so for the last little part, we want to get this apart here. Um, the, so the issue is, I can't just push this down through because the wearing has a really deep groove on the end. Um, the other thing we can do is desolder or cut this, and then we get the whole brush holder off. Um, but again, I don't know what I'm doing here yet, so I don't want to make stuff unrepairable. So the plan, I think I'm just going to get some little screwdrivers and just hold the brushes back and then just kind of hold this up off the ground and then just pop that down and through. So that's the plan here now. So again, this isn't really a nice camera setup, so I'm going to set this down and do that. Okay, so a little bit of time has passed, but now we've got our Bosch parts that we need here. So we've got our new uh, brushes here. It's got this little plastic insert to keep the brushes pushed back. Our new solenoid and that new plastic plunger arm so i get some stuff cleaned up and uh swap our brush set up over okay so we got it out so i cut that piece off of the old one to get it apart because it's spot welded on and then i just took a grinder and ground the back off so now this slips in here like so. So now I'm going to pinch it and I was debating whether I should spot weld it, the TIG welder or solder it. I think I'm just going to solder it, use a little bit of flux and uh, hopefully get a good connection. So as long as it's good connection, I don't think we should have to worry about the solder melting because it shouldn't create any heat is what I'm thinking. Okay, so we got it switched over here. This isn't my proudest work, but we've got it stuck together. So originally that's spot welded. <clears throat> you can kind of see that with the new one here. Uh, let's go to a nice clean one. You can just kind of see the marks where it's spot welded. So there's not a chance that a soldering iron is going to get hot enough, or at least mine won't get hot enough to melt that together. So a little tick torch, a little bit of heat, and yeah, that's definitely stuck on there now. Um, looking back on it, the only reason I was going to try and do this myself was to get it done on a weekend, and that way I wasn't out of vehicle. Um, but with the Valio versus Bosch mix up, it's been a couple weeks I've been out. So I was just thinking of it last night. Once I figured out that I had the wrong parts, I probably should have just boxed this all up and sent this to Seth and just had him do it. Um, but I guess now I can say I've partially rebuilt a starter. Um, so I don't think my brushes, there's really anything wrong with them. Um, I have seen them, not on the V10 specifically, but these cables get corroded and hot and then they melt and fall off. So that is kind of nice that it's got a new setup here. But the main thing I was after was the solenoid itself. So got a nice new one of those. So I think we're gonna clean up the slip joint there and uh, kind of clean up my workspace so we can start putting stuff together. Um, I checked resistance to make sure everything's good. It's not really a perfect science. Um, the multimeter, if I 
0.1 ohms and I get the same reading if I go from a brush to this wire itself. So ideally you should be doing a voltage drop test on that, but I don't really have a way of testing it. So I'm hoping my welds up, down, down are uh, good enough. Okay, so we've kind of cleaned everything up. Um, I've got it slid in here. Um, so the purpose of this plastic piece is to keep the brushes pushed back so that you can slide it in. So something like that. No, ready to keep going back together. Okay, so now we're gonna put this end cover back on um, and then put the washer and snap ring and everything on here so the armature doesn't fall out of the starter here. Then I'll have to screw around with the brushes here again. So I'm gonna put a little bit of um, white synthetic grease just on the bushing, just a little dab and uh, not that it's spinning all the time, but could use a little bit. So get all that together and then we'll start on the rest of the stuff. Okay, so up next we're gonna get this all reassembled. So it's actually be pretty easy now that it's apart. Um, I can just take this, squeeze that down with my fingers, slip it onto that joint and then slip this all together into that nose cone there. So taking it apart, I really wondered how I was going to get it back together, but this seems pretty easy. So once all that's sitting in there, you just put this little rubber plug over it, probably that way, and then it can't fall out. And then we can install a solenoid. Okay, so that's installed nice and easy. So I'm using the old or the starter as like a kind of a holder. Um, so now we can get the new solenoid installed. So long studs, so that'd be for our positive, positive cable from the Toreg. The short one here will be going to our starter and it's going to go down like so. So this, these screws, I want to get a little bit of blue Loctite on them and then uh, we're going to install that. That way all this is done and it doesn't run away on us. Okay, so that's the throat assembly all back together that way. So up next, we're going to get the planetary back how it's supposed to be. So. I'm just going to fill, put a little bit of grease on these roller bearings, a little bit on the gears themselves, and then as well, I'll put a little bit on here and kind of clean some of this dirt and stuff up off the shaft, and then that can go back in there. Okay, so this part, we got the planetary back in, so now we have to put the snap ring on to hold it all together, and this retainer, so the retainer goes on first, so that way when this gear comes out, it'll stop against this and it can't slide off because of the snap ring. If we go the other way, nothing's stopping it from getting forced off the snap ring and then I don't think that will fly off, but you're gonna have poor engagement against the flex plate. So the snap ring, just use external pliers, whatever works best. We'll just get that on there. I obviously, I can't film it. I need two hands here for this. Okay, scratch that idea. Don't use pliers. 15 mil, if you get it just kind of sitting on the taper, just set it on like that and just give it a good tap. So now we can just walk it the rest of the way with a hammer and punch or a screwdriver or whatever. Okay, so to get this collar over the snap ring, so by the time you get the snap ring down into that groove where it's supposed to be, it's opened up and there's not a chance you can get this washer started. So it worked nice is have a set of pliers to kind of pinch that tight um, and then a, another set with the screwdriver as a spacer to kind of leverage and pop that up while you're squeezing them, them together. So it's one of those jobs you kind of need four hands type deal, but yeah, it wasn't too bad. Okay, so we're pretty well ready to slide it together. I got my tie bolts, a little bit of, little bit of Loctite on them. So we're ready to go back together. The issue here is your planetary. It's got it's just that little groove it's got to sit in. So it's got one there and then one down there. And it's kind of springed out. So I'm just going to put a little white mark on there with a paint marker. So then I'm going to kind of hold this out with my hand. 
slide it into there and then get the tie bolts to make sure everything's sitting how it's supposed to. We don't get that all jammed up and not sitting where it needs to be. So that's just something to kind of keep in mind and make sure that all these spacers are still in here and haven't fallen out. And then we should be ready for reassembly. So I think I'm just going to end this here. It spins. Um, it's not a perfect test. Like as I said earlier, it should really be under load, but I don't have any way of doing it besides reinstalling it, obviously. So hopefully this video helped. Um, again, I want to thank Seth for the parts. And if you're wanting to get a rebuilt or a new V10 starter, I would recommend just sending it to him and getting it done. And uh, then you don't have to worry about rebuilding it. So it's more or less kind of cool to see what's inside. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to end this video here. I've already did the video on removing it. And I'm assuming assembly won't be much different than taking it apart. Hopefully a lot easier. So Again, uh, thanks for watching and hopefully this video helped.